Let's take a look at color images and how the data is stored on the computer. So color images are typically saved in RGB format, and the RGB stands for red, green, and blue. In the RGB format, any color can be described as a combination of red, green, and blue lights, as indicated by this color wheel here. Now, different hues are created by combining different intensities of light in each color. So what does this look like? Well, imagine that you have a color that is specified by the RGB property. The R uh, is the intensity of the red channel, the G is the intensity of the green channel, and the B is the intensity of the blue channel. And for the purposes of this explanation, we're going to use the unsigned 8-bit integer format to describe these three numbers. Okay? And just as a reminder, the unsigned 8-bit integer goes from 0 to 255, and 0 being the lowest intensity and 255 being the highest. So let's take a look at the color black to begin with. Black has an RGB value of 000, which means that it has no red, no green, and no blue. So that makes black. And this should be unsurprising because it's basically like saying there's no light there. White, on the other hand, is specified by the RGB coordinates 255, 255, 255. That is pure red, pure green, and pure blue. Mixed together gives us white. And we can look at the third color, which is our CU gold. Um, it's specified by the coordinates 207, 184, and 124. And these are indicated by uh, these three squares over here. So these are the relative intensities, again, of the red, green, and blue channel. Now, a computer display actually consists of red, green, blue pixels. So this picture on the left here is a picture that I took with my um, cell phone camera uh, pointing at my monitor. And you can see here that they are very distinct squares. And if you zoom in a little bit more, you can see that this is a two by two um, group of pixels and you can see very clearly here that they are they have a blue a red and a green component all right so each pixel on your on your display is actually consists of this red green blue pixels and so the question really is now how do we actually see color and it turns out that it's actually a little bit of an illusion so mixing a red photon and a green photon does not actually result in a yellow photon okay let's just make sure that that is clear but actually what we see is actually a signal from the cone cells in our eye. And we actually have three different types of cells in our eye that, you know, um, that preferentially sees red, green, and blue. And so when we see a red and green photon, uh, somehow the stimulation of those two cone cells in our eyes gets interpreted as yellow by our brain. So it's actually an illusion that our brain creates. So how is color image data stored? Well, it is stored as a three-dimensional matrix. Three-dimensional matrix has, uh, in this case, only three uh, Z planes, if you will, um, that correspond to the intensity in the red channel, the intensity in the green channel, and the intensity in the blue channel. And so in MATLAB, this would be a matrix of the size M by N by three. All right, let's switch over to MATLAB and I'll show you what I mean. All right, let's start by declaring a matrix of zeros. And because I want this image to be large enough for us to see, I'm going to say it's a 300 by 300 um, pixel. All right. Uh, actually, what we need to do is we need to create a matrix that is 300 by 300 by 3 if we want a color image. All right. And you can see here that, you know, this is the 300 rows, 300 columns. And then the third number here simply indicates the number um, of planes in the Z axis. All right, in this case, like I said, for a color image, it has to be three. All right, let's start by declaring a matrix of zeros in MATLAB. And I'm going to create a 300 by 300 by three uh, matrix of zeros. Um, and I'm going to give it the type of unsigned 8-bit integer. And this will just help IM show know how to display the image later. Okay, so just to reiterate, this matrix has 300 rows, 300 columns, and it has three Z planes, right? And each of these planes correspond to a color, all right? So in this case, okay, so let's try to recreate the CU gold, okay? So the RGB values were R was 207, uh, G was 184, and B is 124, okay? 
Um, and so the way we can do this is we can set the first uh, plane of A. And I'm going to use the word plane here to refer to the third dimension. So the first plane of A should be uh, 207. Okay. So hopefully this syntax is not too confusing to anybody. And what we're doing is we're indexing all the rows, all the columns, but the first plane, which corresponds to the red channel. Okay. And we're going to set this all to 207. Now we're going to do the same thing here for the green channel, but we're going to set it now to 184. And then we can do the same thing now for the blue channel and it's 124. Okay. And now of course, if I display this image in MATLAB using I am show, you get a square that is the CU gold. Okay. All right, if you wanted to play around, I encourage you to change the different values for the red, green, and blue channels. Um, and one place that you can um, use to get um, colors is Google. So if you go to google.com and type in color picker, um, you'll see this um, little tool appear. Um, and basically you can select um, a color that you like in this color picker tool. And then have a look at this RGB values here. All right, and this tells you the red, green, and then the blue components um, to get this color. Okay, so now we know that color is really defined by these three different values. Um, let's have a quick look at what a color image looks like. Um, and you can uh, feel free to follow along here. We can read in this image, um, call it chips.png. And this is an image that is shipped with MATLAB. So let me display this image. All right, this is what it looks like. You can see it's an image that basically consists of a bunch of, um, I think, felt discs sitting on the table, and they have you know red, green, and blue, and orange and yellow as well. All right. Now, if I wanted to get the red channel out of this image, all right. First of all, let me point out here that the variable i um, is a three ninety one by five eighteen by three. All right. It's the last dimension here only has three planes, so you know it's a RGB image. Um, so if I wanted to get the red channel out of this image, I can index it with all rows, all columns, plane one. And let me create a new figure window and display this image. All right, this is what the red channel looks like. Okay. And if you look at these um, colored circles, you'll see that the red channel is brightest, which means it looks white um, for the colors that have red in them, all right, and which are yellow, orange, and red. And the colors which do not have red in them, which are the green and the blue circles, um, they appear quite dark in this image. All right, now let's do the same thing and have a look at the blue image. Okay, let me show blue. Oops, actually, sorry, I made a mistake there. Let's look again. Um, the blue image should have a Z plane of two. Apologies. All right, so this is the blue image. Okay, again, if we look at this image, you see that the pixels that contain blue, which are yellow and blue, all right? And actually, uh, before I go any further, I should really tell you that uh, if you mix red light and blue light, you get yellow that is blue. All right, let's take a look at another example. And then this time I'm going to read in the image coloredchips.png. Now this is an example image that is shipped with MATLAB. And the image looks like this. All right, so it contains a bunch of um, colored disks sitting on the table. And the disks have colors of, you know, red, green, blue, orange, and yellow, okay? Now, if I wanted to extract the red channel out of this image, I would go red equals I, all rows, all columns, and plane one. Okay. And if I create a new figure window here and display this image, here we are. Right. Remember, this is now a grayscale image, right? We've only extracted the red component of this image. And you'll notice here that the disks that have red in them which is red and yellow and orange, they appear bright in the red channel. 
right? It's just, it's exactly what we'd expect because the rate channel contains the intensities um, that appear red to us. And the disks that do not have any red in them, so the blue and green disks, look dark in this image, right? Because there's very little red component in these. All right, so that's the red image. Let's now pull out the green image. And again, the green image is all rows, all columns, but plain two. So let's display the green image here. All right, so this looks a little bit different, right? This is the red image. This is the green image. I'm just going to bring back the color image here. Okay, and you can see here that the disks that look green, actually what's really interesting here is that this that look yellow um, have the highest intensities. The disks that look green here um, appear a little bit darker in this image, right? But they're still brighter than the red and the blue and the orange disks, which are very dark. All right. Um, so actually it turns out that if you mix red and green, you do get yellow, okay? And so if, by that logic, um, if we look at the blue channel, we would expect the yellow dots to look quite dark. Let's see whether that's true. And there you go. You can see that um, the yellow disks here have very little blue components in them, right? And actually, um, the only disks that look really um, bright in the blue channel are the blue disks, okay? All right, so how does this relate to us for microscopy? Well, let me close out of these images, clear the screen. Okay, I'm gonna read in the image cardiocells.tip. All right, this is what it looks like. So this image is, um, is an image of cardiomyocyte cells that have been stained with a red fluorescent dye. Okay. Now, uh, the cameras that we use on, micros on the microscope is a grayscale camera. It only records the intensity. And so um, the data that we get is just a single grayscale image. And so it appears and is displayed as um, just a black and, and white image. All right. And so now if I switch back to MATLAB, um, we can have a look at what one of these images looks like. Right now, th now that we've added in the um, the filter in place, um, the only information that you get back on the camera is the intensity um, of each pixel. Okay, and so then the computer saves these intensities, and you get this grayscale image. All right, so let's switch back to MATLAB and have a look at what this looks like. So if I read in this image here, cardiocells.tiff, then you can see that because we have applied that filter in front of the camera, um, the camera pixels really only record the intensity of the light that passes through it. All right. And so then you get this grayscale image um, that just consists of intensity. Okay, so let's see um, one way to do this is um, we can start off, first of all, by creating our three-dimensional matrix. Um, so again, the same thing, we're going to create a matrix of zeros. Um, in this case here, I'm going to use the size of the image I, which is 499 pixels, 499 pixels um, tall, and then three. And then in this case, I'm just going to match the um, data type of the image and keep it as a UN16 or an unsigned 16-bit integer. Okay. Now remember, we only want to um, make this image look red, so we're going to index just the first plane and insert in, replace basically all the pixels in the first plane with our intensity data. And so if I display this image now, you will see that it looks red. It does look very strikingly red because this image was a little bit dim, but it is, does appear red. Okay, and now please don't do this if you're doing any kind of quantitative image analysis. But just for the purpose of this um, exercise here, if we want to make this image look a little bit brighter, um, we can kind of cheat and you know maybe multiply this by 10, and this will just make the image look a little bit brighter. Okay, um, and since that 10 might be a little bit too much, so let's go back down to five. There we are. So this is an image that you might see um, on your microscope. All right, and so since we 
since the actual data is a grayscale image, it's only the intensity that is actually recorded. Um, the color information itself is fake. And so typically this will be will be called a false color image. All right, so the Im this color is uh, generated by the computer or a program um, after the image was captured. Um, now we can obviously um, do fun things with this. So if we didn't want to just keep it red, we could um, make it purple. And purple is a combination of red and blue. So in this case, we can also index the blue channel. And we can make this image purple or magenta. All right, let's look at another example of how uh, this sort of technique is useful in microscopy. So here I have two images, one that is from the channel that has the cell bodies and one that has the channel that have the nuclei. So let me um, just show you what this looked like. It's going to be in the cell bodies image in um, the variable I cell and I'm going to be in the nuclei image into um, the variable I nuclear. So if I go display I cell, all right, this is what the cell bodies look like. So this is basically just a, a zoomed out version of the image we still were looking at earlier. Um, and if I now display what the nuclei image looks like, then this is what the image looks like. All right. So if I just put them side by side, um, hopefully you can see that. Okay. Now these images are actually taken uh, with the same set of cells and the microscope in the same position. Um, so what we can do now is we can actually overlay both these images on top of one another. Okay. Um, and for the purpose of this demonstration here, I am going to make the cells um, red and I'm going to make the nuclei green. Okay. And again, typically when you're working with color images, you're only using it for display purposes. Um, you never really want to analyze color images because um, it's just a lot more work. Um, the camera already gives you grayscale images. Um, and you know, if you're running your segmentation algorithms, you don't typically want to have like more information than you need to work with, right? And what I mean by that is that you generally don't want the nuclei to be in the same images of the cell bodies because then it makes it really difficult to separate, um, to segment the nuclei from the cell bodies. So typically you keep these sep images separate. Okay. Um, now, one other little step, seeing as we are going to be um, just using these images for display, what I'm actually going to do very quickly now is just to normalize the image of the, uh, normalize the intensities of these images. Um, so what I'm going to do is first of all, convert the unsigned 16-bit integer into a double. And then I, all I'm doing is simply dividing this uh, this image with its maximum value. All right. Um, and this normalizes the image in the sense that it may now um, just makes that highest intensity pixel uh, to have a value of one. Um, and then I'm going to reconvert that back into an unsigned 16 bit integer by just multiplying that by 65,535. I'm going to use the uin6 function to convert that into a 16-bit integer, okay? Um, and it should look exactly the same, except that now we don't need to rescale the axes um, for this image to look um, to look bright. All right. Um, I'm going to do the same thing very quickly here uh, for the nuclear image. All right, I'm just going to very quickly display this image. Oops, we don't need the scaling anymore. And so that's what the image will look like. Okay, so we're going to create our RGB matrix once again. Um, in this case, it's a 1900 by 2240 by three. It's always three, um, an unsigned 16 bit integer. Like I was saying, I'm going to insert the cell bodies into the first plane, which is the red channel. All right, and I'm going to insert 
the nuclei into the second plane, which is the green channel. All right, and now if I display this image, you will see that we now have bell bodies in red and then nuclei in green. And so I really hope that this little video here um, gives you an idea of how color data is stored uh, on the computer um, and how that information is then used to generate a color image.